I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and we're here today to talk about the XLR Carbon Chassis. Now, the XLR Carbon Chassis is the latest and greatest from XLR Industries, and it really is a very, very nice chassis system. If you're looking for something lightweight to serve double duty, maybe as a hunting rifle or as a tactical rifle, or if you're just tired of carrying around a 20-pound tactical rifle. Now the XLR carbon chassis is the next generation of chassis and a great improvement over their XLR Evolution chassis. Now the Evolution chassis is of course still available, but you can consider this the new flagship of their line. First of all, the chassis system is available for the Remington 700 long action and short action and the Savage short action rifles. The rifle you see in front of me is a Remington 700 AAC SD with a 20 inch barrel. The handguard configuration on this chassis system is available in two options. You can get either with the 12 inch handguard that we see here or a 15 and a half inch handguard which really gives you a lot of extra space for accessory mounting if you wish to do so. Now let's talk about the handguard for a minute. This is really where the XLR Carbon takes its name from and also the most outstanding feature of the chassis system. You have a octagon shaped vented handguard here that is made of a very sturdy and very thick carbon fiber. I can really squeeze it as hard as I can and not feel any flex in this at all. Shooting it off a of barricade, shooting it prone, digging the bipod feet into the ground, we didn't have any problems with it flexing. The only way you can really get this thing to flex is by grabbing the barrel and the handguard at the same time and pushing on the side. And even then, you're getting very minimal movement and it bounces right back. The handguard has these very attractive cooling holes cut into it and they really serve double duty. They do allow air to circulate around your barrel to allow it to cool off faster on those long strings of fire, but it also gives you options to mount these short Picatinny rail sections wherever you wish. Now the Picatinny rail sections are an added expense, however that allows you to decide how many or how few you want. You can run this handguard completely slick if you want. We did mount two rail sections up here because we wanted to be able to mount cameras on it while we were reviewing the system and also to see how well the rail sections stayed put. And they worked very well. You can either mount them on the flats or on the 45 degree angles, wherever you want. So they're a great option if for some reason you want to mount a dot sight at say a 45 degree angle or if you want to do like we did and put cameras on the thing. You can also mount rail sections on the bottom of it to attach something like an Atlas bipod if you wish. Now the rail system, the handguard system is equipped with a sling stud so you can mount a Harris type bipod like we have here or a sling if you wish. And the handguard is finished off by a nicely machined aluminum cap. So you don't have to worry about running into a barricade and cracking or chipping the edge of the carbon fiber. All along the handguard where the cooling holes have been cut, they've been radiused very nicely so you don't have any sharp edges that you're going to cut yourself with and you don't have any little bits of fiber poking out. It's finished very, very nicely. As we come to the back, the back of the handguard is finished off with an aluminum bracket that then mounts it into the aluminum receiver section. Initially, I saw the three screws on here and I was a little bit concerned because I didn't think the three little screws were going to be able to really hold this handguard on with the abuse that I usually put rifles through. Not to worry though, the three screws just simply provide the front and back tension and there are actually lugs that extend in to the receiver section that hold the handguard on. So your side to side shear forces are not gonna break this thing off. You can slam it around pretty good and it's not going anywhere. Now the added advantage of these three screws is that it allows you to loosen them up and slide the handguard straight off. So if you've already mounted your system, you've already zeroed it up, and you decide you want to change where a rail's at, you just pull the screw, slide it off, change your rail, slide it back on, tighten them down, and you don't have to worry about losing zero in your system. This is a great improvement over the original XLR Evolution chassis that really required you to loosen up your action screws in order to get the handguard off. Now as we come back and look at the receiver section here, you'll see they have these really nice open machined areas here that remove a considerable amount of material from the receiver block. It really lightens it up, 
quite a bit and gives you a really attractive pattern that draws the eye. I'm really fond of the way the sides of the receiver look. Unfortunately, this is not available on the XLR Evolution chassis. It's only available on the carbon chassis due to the machine time that it takes to run this pattern and lighten up the receiver block. Now the XLR carbon chassis accepts AICS magazines. We have a five round magazine in here right now and 10 round magazines are available and they do fit and they do not extend past the pistol grip. So they work quite well. The trigger guard houses the magazine release. The magazine release is nicely machined, nicely radius. There are no sharp edges on it. And it protrudes just far enough that you can come under and hook it with your thumb if you need. It does not protrude beyond a 10 round magazine. And it's also set up in a position where I can hit it with the firing hand if I need to do so. The magazine well is radius, so you really don't have a problem getting magazines in quickly. They just snap in. I do recommend getting the front in first because they still are narrower at the front than they are at the back. But as you can see, they latch in very quickly. As we come back on the trigger guard, the center of the trigger guard is relieved. So if you have an adjustable trigger installed, on your system, you can get Allen wrenches in there to access your adjustment screws without removing the action. That's a really nice touch. We come back to the pistol grip. The pistol grip on the XLR carbon chassis is an Ergo Tactical Deluxe pistol grip. When I first came into this grip on the XLR Evolution chassis, I really fell in love with it and I've since transferred pretty much all of my Precision ARs over to this type of grip. It's got a really nice palm swell on the side and it really allows you to lock your hand in and get it right where you need it. Because of the palm swell, it allows you to get a consistent grip every time you hit it and you really know where your hand's at. It has a nice textured finish on it and has kind of a grippy over molded texture to it. Now you'll notice it does have the duckbill cut off. The XLR carbon chassis accepts quite an array of AR-15 grips as long as they don't have a duckbill on them. If you get a grip with a duckbill, then the duckbill will have to be cut off so that you can attach it on here. Not really a big deal. It's usually a pretty quick effort with a hacksaw to get that done, but it does need to be taken into account if you're shopping for a grip. As we come to the back of the receiver, the buttstock that we have on this one is XLR's tactical buttstock. The tactical buttstock is designed to be ergonomic and to be snag free and low profile. We've got this nice curved feature down here which is still enough for you to grip with your support hand and hold it into your shoulder. But there's not anything sticking down here to grab onto web gear, snag, get caught on anything. The cheek piece on the tactical buttstock is ambidextrous. It's equally comfortable from either side. The buttstock is adjustable for length of pull. The entire buttstock can be adjusted for cant from one side to the other, but I do not recommend that on a rifle that you're going to be using from either side. That cant can screw you up when you switch to the other side. The cheek piece has a considerable range of movement up and down, so you can really get it dialed in even with the high AR type scope mounting systems like we have here. The butt pad is a nice cushy recoil absorbing type material. It's really got some uh, squish to it and it's really comfortable when you're on those long shooting sessions at the range with a lighter weight system. The butt pad can be adjusted up or down to get it wherever you need to get it. And you really have a wide range of adjustment to get this buttstock dialed in to your specific ergonomics. Now, if you don't want to go with the tactical buttstock or one of XLR's other options, then you can just simply remove the entire buttstock and you can install a standard AR-15 buttstock. Now, since there is no lower mounting boss down here like you have on an AR-15 receiver, Stocks like the A1, A2, or Magpul PRS are not going to fit correctly without considerable modification. But if you stick with the adjustable stocks like a CTR or an ACS or one of those stocks, uh, they'll go on, they'll fit just fine, and they'll work well, although you will have to do something about the extra cheek height on those stocks. Overall, I really did not find anything to complain about on the XLR carbon chassis. We took quite a bit of time working with this system. We've had it for quite some time, and I really tried hard to find something not to like about it. 
The fit and finish on the chassis is excellent. You can tell that there was a lot of effort that went into design and aesthetics in this chassis. I think the only thing that I can really complain about it is that when we dropped our action in here, the barrel did not line up perfectly in the center of the handguard. It's canted to the side just a tiny bit. Now, because this is a factory action, I really can't say if that little bit of deviation is because of the carbon fiber tube or if it's because of the recoil lug that Remington installed. Every now and again, those lugs are just off from one side to the other. And Remington even has a tolerance to the barrels being centered in the channel on their factory rifles, even their 700P and their higher end rifles. Um, anybody that's been to a Remington Armor School will tell you that that's not something that they will warranty if the barrel's just off to one side or the other in the channel. So I'm not real worried about that. It had absolutely no effect on function and really unless you look very closely, it's not even something you notice. Beyond that, the chassis worked perfectly. If you need a chassis system for your rifle and you're worried about carrying around a boat anchor, then give the XLR carbon chassis a look. I think this will be right at home on a rifle that you want to be able to take out in the woods and go deer hunting or take to a tactical rifle match. Just a quick matter of slapping a bipod on it and go, or if you want it lightweight, strip it down and roll with it that way. With a lightweight optics situation, you're gonna have a really nice compact package. Now, the XLR carbon chassis is available as a folding version where the hinge allows the buttstock to fold over to the left side of the rifle. If you need a very compact system, then that's the way to go. We wanted to stay on the lighter weight of things, so we didn't order the hinge on this one. Um, we can't comment on how solid the lockup is, but if you really need an ultra compact lightweight system, look into the hinge mechanism or purchase it as the fixed stock and the hinge mechanism can be added later. It's no big deal. It just screws right in to the hardware there. Starting price for the XLR carbon chassis is $900, and obviously options that you add will take the price up a little bit from there. But for $900, you're getting a very high quality, well-machined system that will last you quite a bit of time. I really enjoy the fact that this system is lightweight. A lot of the rifles that I work with are pretty heavy boat anchors. So being able to spend some time with a chassis that I can set up to fit my body and still not break my back at the end of the day is really a pleasure. If you guys want to pick one up for your Remington 700 long action, short action, or your Savage short action rifle, we'll leave a link in the description down below. If you decide to pick one up, make sure you let them know that we sent you. If you guys have liked this video, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, please think about posting our link up in the Facebook page, on your Twitter feed, in the gun forums you frequent, anywhere you go. More exposure is better for us. It makes our numbers go up and that makes it easier for us to get gear and equipment to review for you guys. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, get out and shoot.